Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through a client scenario where I was given an opportunity to build a data set where they wanted to be able to easily track a bunch of different fields on a form and actually determine the quality coming in. So being able to see for any of these forms how often was the first, the second, and the third question completed. So the output that you can see in front of you here, I was able to create a visual that tracks across each of the questions or columns the percentage completed, basically non-blanks that are being included in there, and even with the ability to actually be able to click any of these individual percentages and see yes or no for any of these and get the filtered form data below it and any of the IDs with it. Now, what I ended up using is Power Query and a bit of unpivoting and design to allow me to actually only have one single measure to do all of this because my first objective in here, an attempt actually created a bunch of different measures and calculation groups. So I wanna show you the logic that I used, how I implemented this and everything else between the model and Power Query. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI Desktop and get started. So to start our conversations, let's go ahead and take a look at this visual that we have here at the top. We can see that I'm actually getting this from a table called required field status that has the required field on the X axis, which is all of the different fields that I care to track, whether or not they were non-blank or not, I simply have a calculation for question count, and then on my legend is the status. So let me go ahead and show you what this table looks like in the model. I'll come over to the data view, go to required field status, and what you can see here is I have a ID column here, and if I filter this to any one, let's go ahead and make an example here, we can see that here are all of the required fields on rows in a column called required field with a status of either complete or incomplete, depending on which row you're on, and in appropriate sort order next to it. So the visual also sorts as well for that column chart that we have. And these IDs are repeated for each one of these. So every single ID here has a row for each of these required fields plus a status related to that. And now for my dimension table, taking a look at dim survey, you'll see that this is unpivoted. I have my original data that's coming in from some form collector where I have one row per ID with all of the necessary fields. Now I just have ones and nulls in here just to represent the data being blank or not. These in the real world would actually have values in there. Plus you can see there's an additional notes column. And last but not least, looking at the model, we can see that there's a relationship between the two of these. Now because this is a one too many, typically I would not actually be able to filter by anything in my fields table and have that push back up to the dim survey. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and clear a filter out just for a minute. I'm gonna open up my visuals well here. And on this table down here, I do actually have a question cross filter. So let's go ahead and clear that out. And you can see that if I actually attempted to filter by any of these, nothing's gonna change below. So this last portion, I actually used something from SQL BI. They have an article that talks about how to cross filter data, or in this case, go against the relationship because I'm essentially trying to filter a dimension table with fact table breakouts because the fact that this is a many to one direction that I'm going, not one to many. So we actually have a very simple calculation for that. Question cross filter, again, from a SQL BI article on how to filter slicers. So I'm just simply checking to see if this is empty from the required fields. And that is equals one. Apply that again click apply, and now that is how I'm able to get that filtered data. So these work very well together and I can select. So for the 80% who completed question 13, these are the people who have non-blank for that. And this 20% is for that person who had blank for that particular question. So it acts as a great cross filter to easily be able to go into any of those. Now, what I wanna actually show you is how I particularly built the required field status table. So we're gonna to come to home I'm gonna to go to the query editor, and the table that I started with was this source data table. Basically one row for each of the fields in the forms, and that eventually feeds my dimension, dim survey table, but it also feeds and is a referenced query that creates my required field status. So let's go ahead and walk through the steps. You can see here that the source points to that source data, and as a reminder of how this is done, that is done by right clicking and using that reference function, which treats this original query as a source for the new query over here. So by doing that, that's the first step. Second step is what columns do I care about as non-blank? So I use the remove other columns 
for the fact that in this one I added for the example a notes column that I don't need to track because that can be blank so it's not pertinent for me. So that was removed. Then I used the replace function to replace all the nulls to incomplete. So I basically went through, I selected the columns that I cared about, I used replace values, and you can see from the menu in here that those were replaced from null to incomplete. That was the second step that I did. Closing out of this, I went to my ID column, right clicked, and I selected unpivot other columns, which led me to this step here. So now I have my required value, which I named up here. I have my value, which is either the original values or incomplete. So now I have part of my data in here, but I want all these other non-blank values just to simply be complete. I don't care what the original value is. I either want incomplete if it was null or complete if it was not null. So then I can add a conditional column, which is accessible from add columns, conditional column, and opening up the menu in here, we can see that I'm simply creating a status column where if the value equals incomplete, then I want you to call it incomplete, otherwise call it complete. And that gives me a final column that just has two values in here. I can remove that original column. I also added a sort column because I wanted the axis of the chart to sort appropriately. So that just simply has an assigned value for everything in here to be able to sort properly in the actual model itself. And that is what is finally fed into this, which then comes into the model and is keyed at the relationship between the two based off of ID. And with that, I only require on this chart a simple calculation to count the rows for the required fields. And if I use that, on a 100% stacked column chart, I automatically get the percentages between the two of them, the counts, and I'm able to see for any of these columns what percentages were complete, and the filters work in both directions. If I selected that user, it automatically shows me what their original values were. And if I selected these bars up here at the top, same thing. So it's a really easy way for me to create a form tracker to a degree, and then also ensure that values aren't ever going to be above or below certain percentages. And you can take this one step further, maybe even potentially add an analytics line. If there's a minimum threshold that you know you want to have people hit above, say, 60 or 50%, but it's a very robust modeling scenario that will accommodate this, but allow for a pretty simple model when it comes to just a couple of measures to then be able to track everything like you see in front of you here. But as I mentioned in each of the videos that I do on similar topics related to the art of discovery with modeling, I love being able to continue to develop models for my clients because scenarios like this I haven't quite encountered before where they wanted to do some interesting tracking, but I also wanted to minimize having to use calculation groups or creating a whole bunch of percentage calculations or anything else. So in that sense, I unpivoted the data, turned it into a column, linked them together, and they will automatically update. If I wanted to add questions, I can edit the Power Query to do that. But it's a nice way, and I would say an elegant way in my mind, to be able to implement this, but keep the model fairly simplistic. So hopefully this is something you found useful. As always, if you have any suggestions, if you like this, anything you would do to improve it, or ways that you might utilize this in your own models, drop that into the comments section. If you like this video, check out some of our videos up here on the upper left for other content that hopefully is useful for you as well. I encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button, share as you desire on Twitter and LinkedIn, and otherwise I will see you all in my next video.